To again save some time, I used a built-in smart material in Substance Painter to start off the work on this wooden crest holder. It is called Wood Chest Stylized and I masked it out immediately to only appear on this area. I think all of you should have it in your Substance Painter package. If not, then don't despair, it's not really vital to use this one. Mostly what I was after were these long wood fibers running along it. Of course, now these are rotated in a wrong way, so we will change it a bit. So open up the group and in the fibers, change this to triplanar. Then also we have this wood fiber 02 layer, so in the wood pattern fill, change the projection as well. I know the wood fibers don't really run that nicely along the direction of the object's shape, but we don't need to stress it that much, it won't be that visible actually. When we then switch here to the height channel, we can slightly lower its effect for the whole group. Now switch back to base color and let's have a look at this edge here. I don't really want to have this sharp line with a lot of dirt along the edge, so let's first deal with the dirt. For that, let's go to this bronze group again, open up the cavity mask and add one more paint layer onto which we will paint with some black color and the dirt brush, removing the dirt. Dirt brush, removing the dirt. <laughs> Ironic. Also, let's play around with this oxidation layer, but it doesn't really do much. By the way, you can see I'm using the mirror option, saving some time masking this stuff. These other layers seem fine. Uh, maybe we can remove this portion from the noise overlay as well. Ah, and here's another culprit, the darken layer. So this way we remove this ugly part of the divide between the crest holder and the actual helmet. Later we will polish it a bit more. Now for the actual rectangular paint that you can see here, which was pretty common for all sorts of crest holders, be it Corinthian, Attic or Chalcedon helmets, for these all artisans like to use this checker pattern on it. So let's figure out a way to do this. Now if we had a conveniently prepared set of UVs, where the whole holder would be laid out in a straight manner, then it would be just a matter of applying a checker texture. We don't though. So I guess what we will need to do is to practice carefully stamping some square shapes onto a mask. But that's good. You need to practice anyway. <laughs> So let's create a new fill layer, onto which we will start our checker pattern, leave on the color and the roughness and increase the roughness and add a black mask to it. To apply it only to the crest holder, we can actually just right click on this mask of the wood chest group and copy it, then paste it here. Now first fill layer, we want to have this red, duplicate it and then second one will be black color. Group these two and name them Paint. One little detail I've also added was to add this linen fabric material into the roughness socket of this black fill layer and also the red fill layer. This way it seems like this colored material is actually a layer of fabric drawn and glued on top of the wooden material. Which might actually have been the case, historically, though no one can be too sure what these were commonly made of. On the black layers mask now, you can add a paint layer and, well, this will be a manual process of painting squares on the crest holder, making sort of a checker pattern on it, and this pattern will follow the shape of the crest holder. If you're working in the 3D viewport, uh, use a uh, camera alignment and object size space and also make sure your brush doesn't have any jittering applied. So use the basic hard brush and in the alpha menu find for example this border square and eliminate actually the width here and now again set this to camera. And to be able to paint through the surface of this object let's actually deactivate this back face culling. After that it's a very similar process to when we painted the waves on the helmet, so just stamp, move your camera, stamp again, if need be rotate 
And that's it. Oh, and uh, use mirroring, of course. Continue stamping until you're happy with the shape. Of course, don't be afraid to go back and re-stamp some of these. This might help the result. If you encounter the same problem of spacing up here as me, you can solo it for example like this. It is not really historically correct. The ancient Greeks had the checkerboard pattern all over the holder. But again, let's not stress it. I'm sure someone 2500 years ago messed up just the same as I did now. Now let's add some scratches. To quickly fill the linen color material with some, just add a mask to the whole paint group, add a fill layer onto it and fill it for example with this grunge scratches rough. Hit the invert option and then play around with the values like I do. Until you arrive at a final result. For example, this looks good. Group both our layers and name this one crest. Now above the paint group, add one more fill layer. Leave only color and roughness. And on the color, add for example this grunge leak dirty texture on it. Increase its scale to two and also the roughness. Then add a black mask and on it, paste for example this dirt dry mask generator. Okay, not the finest choice. So I remove it and maybe add something else. This dirt dusty, right? Ha, huh, much better. Though slightly invisible, we can for instance make the blending mode to be multiply. And yep, that helped. Now let me just very quickly add a paint layer on the mask and remove this dirt from this region here. You know what? Let's actually take this overall dirt and put it from the group above everything. And that works even better now. One last thing, find this crest group, add a white mask on it and start painting with the dirt one brush set to black color to remove this ugly hard edge where the wood material ends. I want it to blend together much more organically and when you paint around it, it looks much better I think. Now let's get to the finishing phases of the helmet texturing. Through this, as I mentioned, I kept being unhappy with how the black part of the coloring looks. So I actually almost hit it at this point and decided to think about it later. So again, we will continue working on this in the last lesson of the series. Then I proceeded with cleaning up some of these dark spots that I didn't really like. They are made by the cavity layer. So first off, I lower the procedural thickness curvature and ambient occlusion sliders here and play around with the texture sliders until you are happy. Then on the paint layers go around with the dirt brush and add and remove and do it until you like the result. And this time let's actually do it without the mirroring and try to make each side unique. I decide to add some more dirt even back here, so it's not that pristine, at least compared to the front part. Alrighty, and that will be all for the bronze material. Now let's have a last quick look at this crest holder. I actually want these scratches to be a bit more plastic than this, like there's actually a layer of cloth on the wood. For that, we need to activate this height layer. Let's make the value about 0.01 and then do the same here. Or actually, since the red layer is below the black one, not masked out on the spots where the black one is, we only have to raise the height on it, making it zero on the black layer. And already this is exactly what I want. Okay, let's just quickly go through some of these scratches and damaged parts and remove the underlying wood again. Sometimes I like to use stuff like anchor points, micro height and micro normal to drive these effects. Sometimes I like to go in manually and just paint it. 
However, if you want to learn more about the stuff I just mentioned, you can have a look at my Substance Painter Launchpad course over at CG Boost. I describe everything there. And unlike this tutorial, there it's all systematic and goes much deeper. So if you want to learn Painter properly, you can start there. All right, now last step of this lesson will be to fill this area here. So just take the dark fill layer and on a mask paint layer with the UV chunk fill tool activated, just fill it. Still though, the white color beneath it is visible. So we need to fill the wood texture onto this region as well. And good. Well, let me actually have a look at how this would look if there was just the wood material, not the dark texture. Hmm, not too bad. So I will leave it like that. Now, when we have a look at it, I think we've made a very nice archaic crest holder. Now take a moment to admire your creation. And when done, let's jump into the next lesson where we will finally finish up the work on this helmet. And just as always, I'd be happy to hear any ideas and requests in the comment section. And if this tutorial was helpful, consider visiting heroesofbronze.com where you will find more courses, models to buy, and also my Patreon, where you can support the project. But with that, I'll see you next time. Martin out.